Well, I've been involved with a uh, study of these stone tools from the Serati Mastodon site, and it's a, a team that I've joined relatively recently. They've been working on it uh, nearly 15 years, and they've gathered around them various experts in looking at the bones, in looking at the geology, the sediments, trying to work out how old it is. But when they looked further into the geology and, and the fauna that was there, they came to realise it had to be quite old. And uh, uh, then they found these stones, uh, bits of anvils and hammers is what they looked like, and distributed in a very strange way. And they've asked me to come in to look at the stone artefacts, because it's an area that I'm especially interested in and I've got some expertise in. So I've been studying a couple of the stone artefacts initially and then they got me over to look at the whole collection um, last year. Initially when we looked at them I was thinking uh, perhaps they were some kind of uh, a, a plant processing or animal processing tool for um, grinding up plant materials or um, small animals. And it turned out after finding out a bit more about it that these things were um, used for smashing up Mastodon bones. The team sent to me from Santiago what they think was probably the most important uh, hammer and or part of the most important hammer and part of the most uh, important anvil. It's near complete when I say part. It, it, it's 95 percent complete but it's it's an anvil which rests on the ground and it's had bone rather um, leg bone or a, a rib or something is laid across the top of it and then the other part is a part of a hammer, which is about five times that big, and that's lifted up and slammed onto the bone, so it smashes onto the, uh, the anvil. We're able to look at these under low and high magnification, and also to try and uh, detect whether or not we can see marks that are distinctive of, um, of a stone on a bone, or a stone on stone. Okay, well, the initial thing uh, would be to look at relatively low magnification with a point source of light at the site and that's going to cast a lot of shadows so things like striations and um, uh, scars and crushing and pitting on the surface will be most visible but we can also look at higher magnification up to uh, uh, maybe 500 times magnification and at those high magnifications you can see alterations to the surface in the form of pitting and very, very fine striations and sometimes smoothing, abrasive smoothings and sometimes polish. So if you rubbed a, a stone onto a bone for a very long period of time, you're going to get a particular kind of wear. It'll be quite different from rubbing a, a, a softer plant or from rubbing a shell or from rubbing another stone. They'll all have characteristic patterns. It's not the tools themselves that is changing the history. It, it, in large measure, it's the actual age that's been determined. I think if these were turned out to be 10 or 20 or even 30,000 years old, not too many people would blink. The fact that they're 130,000 years old is of great concern to a lot of people because before this evidence, all archaeological material or suggested archaeological material was thought to be younger than about 20 or 30,000 years old. So it adds a, a, an order of magnitude to the age. I think that creates problems because being the first and so much older than everything else, there's a problem with where is everything else in between? The, the questions arise about who, who came to the Americas that early time period? Did they actually establish a viable population there? Or were they, did they die out or did they leave? And uh, we don't know the answers to that question. In terms of the excitement of the whole thing, it's a little bit daunting because any kind of evidence that changes current thoughts, the status quo as much as this does, is, is bound to get and should get high levels of uh, scrutiny and should be looked at very, very critically. And I, I'm sure it will be. It's, and parts of that are a little bit scary. <laughs>